you can all right, here you go. Whenever you well, want you know me, what? So. You you got Fishker then. It's on it's on your plate now, <laughs> mister. It's all you. So as we as we say, uh, please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a ton. We very much appreciate it. And with all the growth we've had lately, thanks so much. So yeah, appreciate it. But uh, but yeah, going to the next one here. This uh, this one is talking about uh, Fisker. And if you're not familiar with Fisker, they they have been around a little while. The name Fisker, mm -hmm. but uh, they're kind of trying to make a comeback now in EVs uh, uh, and with some new things going on with EVs. So. This one comes to us from Auto Week. It's Fisker Ocean will debut at the LA Auto Show. Fisker Ocean is their EV SUV mm -hmm. uh, that they're gonna looking to bring uh, to the LA Auto Show. So basically, this one uh, initially it strikes me, I have to say it kind of like the Land Rover. It just <laughs> it just it just tells me that. Right. And not that it's not pleasing, but it just is initially what what I think there too. But it is quite right. interesting to see. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the Ocean, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a 300 ish mile range car or suv starting about that range supposedly uh, about thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars um to be built in, uh, by austria's uh, as a company in austria that's going to be building them for fisker mm -hmm. um they're supposed to say they're, they're supposedly saying they're going to be entering production for these in uh the fourth quarter of 2022 uh something that they've been saying a few times and they haven't haven't changed they haven't haven't uh, had to change it at all so they've already got some reservations going on for that uh, they say they basically got uh, what seventeen thousand three hundred yes paid reservations for that and um apparently sixty two thousand they call them hand raisers so people i guess that maybe uh, said they they are interested in it, but maybe didn't pay 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 for the full reservation yet. Right. Um, so they do have uh, again they have a little bit of that name already. Fisker is a, some if you're into cars you'd know you'd recognize the name. Uh, and so they usually make her a bit of a, a bit higher uh, luxury kind of product anyway. So it is interesting to see what they're going to be able to come out with mm -hmm. and how but the quality is right. And I expect it's going to be quite good actually. Um, right, that, right. That's the way that's why I'm thinking about it. Um, and they've had some some different kind of um, success with their brands before in the past. Uh, nah, but I kind of well. think they they might have it uh, <laughs> they might have it kind of going on this time, uh, all sorted out. And um, yeah, well, I, I mean, what do you think, man? I well, think it's you said they've had some yeah. success before because they did have actually they beat Tesla to the marketplace in the four door mm -hmm. version yep. of an electric car, and they used the Karma, and they actually mm -hmm. produced twenty five hundred versions of it. They actually had twenty five hundred road going models. And the problem was that they just never their their battery supplier actually went bankrupt. And when that happened, the company went kaput. And basically, yeah. a Chinese company came in and they bought the actual Fisker brand, actually the Karma Automotive. So Fisker actually still mm -hmm. maintains their name and title. And then they turn around and and they folded. But from what I do remember, the only issue that people really had with the Fisker when it originally came out was the fact that it was a hybrid and the exhaust yep. where the hybrid motor was just happened to be right by the passenger and the driver's doors and the air, the hot air would actually run up the side of the car and actually enter the car when you had the windows open. But by and large, most people said that they were, they were actually fantastic to drive. They were fairly mm -hmm. luxurious yeah. and they did hit the market yep. in the right place. And this is where he learned Henrik Fisker, uh, Fisker himself learned a lot of the things about what he wanted to bring to the marketplace this time around, which was a mid-level priced SUV, which yep. I have to say you're right. It does look a lot like an electric Range Rover, so there's not a lot to be said there. But his pricing structure, I think he's roughly $37,000 at his entry level. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much nail on the head where you need to be if you want to be successful in the marketplace and bringing something back to market. And I think he's learned his lessons. Where I think the challenges are going to be is convincing people that Fisker can go the distance after showing this car, I think it was in 2018, now showing it again in 2020, uh, 2021, and now saying yep. we're not going to produce till 2022, 2023. I wonder what the appetite for the public's going to be to kind of go through that, well, long onset, early adapter delay dilemma. What's your feelings on that one? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of dovetails with what we just talked about with the last and, and many other things we talk about with the EVs and the pace of technology with progression and like battery life and range. And then actually some expectations of the public of what those two things should be as yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah. expected range. Having having them uh, kind of say they're going to be producing by fourth quarter 2022, as you yeah, you're right to say they're probably going to be delivering uh, fall and then uh, possibly right at the beginning of 23. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, yeah. What's the what's the feeling gonna be for an SUV with 300 miles of range? That's a big one. At the beginning of 2023, by then, I I feel like 
I, I feel like whoever it might be, whether it is Tesla or somebody else, I feel like battery tech is going to be a bit better by then, uh, battery density and maybe totally different technologies in terms of solid state and things. Right. And I just think, um, I don't know. I, that's it. When we talk to people and when we uh, kind of do some research on uh, one of the things about early, how to, what, when people would want to what, adopt to EVs, mm-hmm. range anxiety, if you've heard of that, it's always, it's always, in, always, it's always in that conversation always somewhere. One. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, 300 miles of range, as as I know and as you know too, right? If it says, okay, 300 miles of range, well, we're talking like best case scenario. Right. Almost sure, always. Sure, sure. And that's, that's stop and go 45, 50 miles an hour in the, in the towns. Um, you know, if you're going on the highways, you're not going to get 300 miles of range. So, again, I'm, I'm just speculating here and we're years out, actually. So, so here's the, and you're right. I think the battery technology can change, but if they've designed it well enough, right? And here's the thing. Yeah. One of the things that they've also touted about this car is the fact that it does have a solar panel built into the roof that it charges mm-hmm. itself at, at some level a little bit better than anything else that's yeah. in the marketplace, yeah. okay? And if they've designed it well enough, right, the car looks fairly decent. And the reason why I'm not showing you yeah. a ton of pictures is because when you go to find a ton of pictures, they're all from slightly different angles, and they, they really don't... There's not, like, a, a complete picturesque, like, kind of let's thumb through this right now thing, right? Uh, because it hasn't debuted yet. So it, it's really just been in, in the focal point of we're getting the first look at it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> if, and I do say if, air quotes... It's designed properly. Maybe they've put some things in place that say that they can adapt to higher range models going forward so they're not beat, you know, beat in the marketplace before they get there. Now, Mm -hmm. the other thing is look at the crowded area of places that, or excuse me, manufacturers that we know want to get into that place right now in the SUV area. Canoe, uh, canoe is one, right? Or is it canoe? Yeah, yeah, canoe, uh, right? Or however, Um, don't want to say it, right? Uh, Ford is going to be eagerly jumping in there because the the Mach E is already out, so that that's there, and it's it seems like this is going to be a small competitor to that, right? The Model Y, the Model yeah, X, they're yeah. they're Model Y probably already being in that space, and now you have obviously Hyundai and Kia with the Evoque, and you know yeah the Ionic and the Ionic's not not the Evoque, yeah, the Ionic yeah. and the, the what is yeah. it the ES six whatever it is, so it's uh, going to. Uh, yeah. EV6. EV6 was it or something like that, I'm, right? I'm not sure to be honest with you. Uh, we covered it last week. We looked at it. I can't yeah, remember the name of it, yeah. so I'm sorry for that. But the difference is it's gonna get crowded in here really, really quick at this size and footprint of vehicle. Yeah. Um I mean the LA Auto Show's in the end of November. It's the night it starts on the nineteenth of November. Right. Uh so that'll be and they've said they're gonna be there as as the article of course says, they're gonna have a, a model there. Um I bet it's going to be pretty nice. Um, right. That would be, I'm just I'm just brainstorming here. That would be nice to go to, but that's that's a bit of ways, but we'll see. Yeah, but, it was the EV6. But, uh, I got it right. The EV6, yeah. right. Yeah. Which I think um, is still yeah, pretty. Yeah. Good looking yeah. car. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if they're going to cut it, man. Uh, I wonder how that's going to impact, again, with all these other manufacturers out there. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think. I mean, it's it's an interesting ride. The EV, look. We get it. Everybody wants to go green. Everybody's hot on this. Everybody wants to be inside this marketplace. It's going to generate another few billion dollars in in activity in the not too distant future over the next five years. And there will be failures, (laughs) obviously. Uh, There was a lot of cars back in the 1940s and the 1950s, a lot of car makers that were around back then that didn't make it to today. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, the big three, as we know, it also went under massive restructures and have bought and sold, you know, from actually more Chrysler on that on that line there. But uh, they've all gone through their transitions to make it to today, and I'm sure the EV market will be quick to revolve around those same positions. So we'll see what happens.